how do you break through your money cycle with your business, your life, when you feel like you've had exponential growth, you've had exponential expansion, and you're experiencing moments of a contraction where you feel like you are working so hard, you're working nonstop, your team is jam-packed on their schedule, yet you are not loving what you're seeing in the bank account. And you're like, what gives? What can I do? Right? And this is a moment for you who is a healer, who is a holistic wellness and beauty expert in your industry, who is well-loved by your clients, who is respected by your clients, who is referred the heck out of by your clients because your work is so amazing. But there is very few of you who, in your opinion, your humble opinion, you're not going to ever say it out loud, but I'll say it for you, who are really as good as what you do. And you feel like if you aren't as available to the masses, to the world, if you aren't as accommodating, then they're good. It's not for you. It's not a fear of like, well, then I won't have the clients. Maybe sometimes it's the fear of, well, then they won't be taken care of. They won't have what they need from, um, in, in my industry, because for you, you do feel like what you do is vital to the women that you serve. And even though you have a family and you're strapped so thin that it's even affecting your health at times, you're still finding yourself giving discounts, doing things on trade, doing freebies, um, or maybe accepting insurances that you don't really want to accept because you are afraid that if you don't do it, who will? Who'll take who will take care of these people? If it's not you, then who? Who will take care of these people? And I'm here to tell you, just remind you of something, that if you continue to burn yourself out to the point where you're kind of dreading even your busy days and you literally have negative five minutes free, that you're going to burn yourself out to the point that you're going to quit and not even offer your services or conversely, It's kind of like the universe will just make it happen for you where it's like you're working yourself too hard. You're not loving this anymore. You're not even paying yourself as well as you'd love to. Uh, You're still finding yourself um, stressed out about, you know, different finances. Then your business could itself just be done because you and your business are separate. You might feel like you are your business, but Really, when you are running a successful business, the business is a separate entity from you. You are a person with a family. Your business is a different separate energy entity. So what's happening is, is maybe you're feeling strains of there's not enough money coming in in terms of I'd love to see more, but that at the same time, you're finding yourself giving away free services or products because you feel like they're vital to your, um, to your clients. And in the same week that you might give away like an extremely high end product or service to a client who you feel is like, you can, you can bring yourself to charge them, even though you're changing their lives or you're supporting their, even their families in ways that are unimaginable you're then feeling a financial strain of like, huh, I wonder why the sales are down. Do you see a pattern here? Or um, everybody else, right? In the past, let's say year to two years has raised their prices. Gas is double. Groceries, take a look at those price tags. They're double. It just has rippled into every industry and everybody's tightening their purse strings. But And you maybe have raised your prices a little, but you're still even hesitant to honor and respect those pricing to certain clientele who you feel that you really needed. But the thing that really needs it, but the thing is about you is that like every one of your client needs it. You offer a life-changing product or service that is irreplaceable by anybody else. So, um, 
it's it's kind of like how do you how do you then equate or how do you formulate who gets it for free who gets it for discount who gets it for trade right there's really no rule right it's it's emotionally driven but that's when i said se- when i invite you to separate yourself from the business um financially and let me make sure that we are still live here in my facebook community because we do record this live in my facebook community and we're we're just going to check on that here and make sure we're still live and if not we're recording it so i guess we'll just keep on keeping on um but and if you're not already in my facebook community the minimalist method for prosperous entrepreneurs I invite you to be in there on Facebook because you can watch the live recordings as they happen. Okay, we're still live here. So um, this is where I invite you to separate yourself from your business um, because it's business. It's not personal, right? It's business. It's just business. And But it's so hard whenever you're the owner, the founder, the CEO, and your clients really depend on you and their families depend on you um, because you know that by them utilizing your services and your products, again, that they're going to be the best version of themselves. And it's going to create a ripple effect of more confidence, more energy, more clear thinking, more success, because you're supporting them at the core of the foundation of who they are. But when you're getting too personal with your finances of your business, that is when the emotions can kind of take over and we're not looking at the bottom line. And again, if you continue to allow your emotions and your feelings to make the financial decisions in your business, then what happens is that you could really work yourself into a tizzy in a really difficult financial situation. Been there, done there, bought the t-shirt. And again, that looks like in two ways, you're either giving too many discounts, too many freebies, too many trades, too many donations. Um, or you even have maybe raised your prices, but you aren't honoring those raises. You aren't communicating those raises. And you're like, Oh, well, this one, I don't think they could do the raise. Well, this one's a returning one I love so much. So I'm okay with them not having the raise or in pricing and, or it looks in ways of you bringing on team that really isn't fully supporting you in the fullest capacity that you could be supported. So in this human economy, when sales might be down, you are the only one bearing the brunt on your shoulders of this financial difficulty, or I don't even want to call it difficulty. It's just like the finances don't look as you'd love to look them. You're okay. You're fine. But the finances don't look the way that you'd love for them to look, right? And so that could look like And again, been there, done there, bought the t-shirt, maybe overextending yourself to over generously pay team, not without them having any sort of incentive of bringing in clientele, helping you to bring in clientele, retain clientele, upsell clientele. There's no incentive because they get paid either way, right? So this is when I invite you to look at, and I'm not telling you to rock the boat and necessarily change anything with those that are ride or die in your business. But when you go to bring in new people, let's say, maybe there is opportunity for you to shift things in your day-to-day with your existing team, commissions, hourly, bonuses, right? Contests, prizes to incentivize them. And then it's like, the more you make, the more they make. The less you make, the less they make. So that way it, whenever that, and again, God provides for you no matter what the human economy looks like, right? So like we don't prescribe and like, oh no, be afraid. Here's what's going on in the economy. But we do invite you to be a wise shepherd of your money, right? Um, And before I tell you the next steps of exactly how you can do what I just mentioned, I have a little something for you and I just want to share it with you. It's a special word from somebody that you know who is going to be our sponsor today. Everybody ready? Take a look, listen in, and listen up because I have something very important to share with you when this message is done. (laughs) 
director of media, the creative agency, you might not know what else I'm doing. I love to help family make sure that you're fully protected. And that comes from a place of if something happens to you, is your business going to be okay? If something happens to you, is your family going to have to worry about money? I am now a representative that will help you make sure that you are fully covered when it comes to your life insurance. Just find me on social media, on LinkedIn, Instagram, or Facebook. Find my name, Marta Saray Greca. Ask me about the life insurance. I'm happy to help you. I'm here to help. That was our special sponsor, guys. Did you guys recognize her? Ha ha. <laughs> so just as a reminder, um, that was our sponsor for today, but we do welcome other sponsors who would love to get in front of tens of thousands of business leaders just like you who are experts in the holistic wellness and uh, beauty space um, who you'd love to get your your services and products in front of. And we have incredible find, founding members for the sponsors of the show. So just PM me on social media. And um, but right now I am the sponsor because I am just trying to get the voice out there for everybody to have life insurance. And soon enough, I'm actually going to be selling securities as well. So I digress, right? So this, this show, by the way, is produced by Media, the creative agency. We are a marketing agency for holistic wellness and beauty experts who are just so done handling your marketing and you just want to do something else. You want to do what you love. All right. So let's talk about it, right? So what could those incentives look like for, um, for encouraging your team to, uh, to support you and bringing in more finances. Obviously that could look like paying people hourly instead of salary or paying people commission instead of salary. And you might think, yeah, but then I'm afraid that like on a super busy week, they have too many hours and then I will not have enough to pay them. So I like to control and cap what they make. The thing is then there is no incentive for them to overproduce, right? And so then when you then would change it to hourly, take a look at your numbers and ensure that if your team is going to be working more hours, that you are bringing in more money and it should really work out well that way for you. Obviously commissions, right? Um, And if it's hard for you to set commissions because so-and-so only works 10 hours um, or so-and-so works 40 or whatever, you could not just do it on commission based on, uh, or people then you don't want people to become competitive with one another where they're like taking sales from each other or whatever. You could make it fair and say, if we hit at, and you're like, I don't want to pay commission. If I don't make a certain amount of money, then you could set it to, if we make certain X goal, then everybody gets a 10% commission on the profit over that goal that we make. Right. Obviously, you could do contests of whoever sells the most gift cards. You could have a product that's been sitting on the shelves or a service that you'd love to promote more of and make that service or the product special. And whoever sells the most of it, or if everybody reaches that communal goal, because again, maybe somebody works 10 hours, somebody works 40 hours, then everybody gets a bonus incentive. Um, you could have incentives for people uh, encouraging their clients to book their next appointment or upsell them on a product before they even leave or gift cards. Um, you might feel like you only really make a good amount of money because you are in your business a certain amount, but I would invite you to have things like team meetings every month and secret shoppers to ensure that that standard of quality is upheld whether you're there or not. Because again, your business isn't really worth anything. It's not a sellable asset if you are so involved in it. And so it's kind of like when you stop, you stop. Nothing to sell there, right? It's not like, unless you own a building, then yeah, you'd, you'd sell the building. Equipment's really only worth pennies on the dollar. Um, people don't really put a value towards um digital assets as much as they should at least. And so I'm just inviting you to be the change within your business. Be the one that upholds things like 
and I'm, I'm, I'm the worst at this. My team will tell you, um, if obviously if somebody is late because of a glitch on a payment, like we won't charge, we'll waive the late fee, but if it becomes a habit and maybe you take payments by a set date, then you should, um, allocate a late fee. Uh, or, you know, if maybe you have a, a big product that is purchased, if it's not picked up by a set time, then there's allocating a, a late fee, right? Um, being the change of enforcing the standards and boundaries. And if you are not the type to do that, because you just don't feel comfortable being the one to do that, then have someone on your team be the one that does that. Have someone on your team be the one that is in the enforcer and take yourself completely out of it. Because again, you have that deeper, like nurturing, loving, supportive relationship with your clients. And you maybe don't want to get into the nitty gritty of like, hey, your payment's late again. Or hey, you haven't picked up this product in weeks. Have somebody who is your balancer have those conversations for you. Or if you find yourself constantly, let's say, going over or over giving for free without actually making people pay for stuff you know, maybe that could be where there could be a big change that if your appointment is over an hour that you charge that extra or you have your bouncer, your assistant, or even somebody who's completely fictional say, hey, your next appointment is here. Even if they're not, just so you're not overstepping on those boundaries for yourself. Only you can be the one who does this. Nobody can make you do it. Only you can be the one that does it, right? And I invite you in these moments, by the way, you might get overwhelmed. You might get, uh, you know, just over it. I invite you to leave pockets of time within your day to do things that bring you joy. Maybe it's even just drinking your favorite latte or at 12 o'clock, taking a five minute break, just breathing in exhaling out double the time with your favorite sound bath music, taking five minutes to just leave your phone on your desk and go for a walk wherever you are. It's getting warmer out no matter wherever you are in the world. I think I'm not actually quite sure. I can only speak for the United States, I guess. Um, and Europe, parts of Europe. I don't know. I digress. But again, nobody's going to make you do that. Nobody on your day off is going to be like, and I could, I could do that, you know, because I am a coach to emerging entrepreneurs and I do try to be the one who's accountable, who holds them accountable and says, Hey, it was your day off. How was it? Did, how much did you relax? Oh, I didn't really relax. I did this and this and this, this came up instead. But the reality is, is all of that is optional because if you had a full day of clients and this and this and this came up, you would say, I can't, I have a full day of clients. So why are you less important than your clients? You are not. You're just as important. And by the way, it is just as much of an honor for you to help them as it is for them to receive your service. It is a communal relationship of gift giving to one another. You are a gift for your services that you give to your clients. And I want you to remember that. But again, even especially as, as women, I feel like we tend to hand over the books to someone else. And I actually, I myself have been one who have has hired bookkeeper after CFO, after accountant, and just handed my books over to them. I didn't want to deal with the finances. I don't, whoop, I didn't want to look at them. I didn't want to think about them. I just wanted to keep attracting and serving my clients, kind of like how you might feel about marketing. And that's totally fine. I still have an accountant. <laughs> I still have somebody, uh, multiple people who, you know, help me with my QuickBooks, but I still look at every transaction weekly. I still look at every report weekly. I still know what's going on financially because again, it's still my business. And so while somebody might be handling the QuickBooks and doing the accounting and doing the bookkeeping, there's certain things that you as the business owner needs to stay in the room for. And so even just paying attention to those um, to those numbers can make a big, big change for you. And also um, 
staying on task with your goals, writing them out every single day. Like literally it could be in the steam in the shower. If you have a glass door, it could be, oh, I'm driving. I'm thinking about it. I'm at a red light. Let me grab a scrap piece of paper. And I always tell you, keep a journal everywhere. Uh, scrap piece of paper and a pen and, and um, just write them out. It'll take you two seconds every single day. Because what happens is, is that when things start to look ways that you don't love the way that they look, um, your brain kind of gets stuck on that and that what you focus on expands. So taking those couple seconds, couple minutes every single day to recalibrate and reground yourself with those goals that you would desire to aspire and aspire to hit, it kind of re-triggers the brain to have that positive thinking and focus on that positivity. And a couple of the coaches that I've worked with has have given me this exercise and I suggest to do it monthly and again, I'm not the best at it either because I get, I'm not like a, a, you know, like many of you high achieving business leaders, I have a little bit of ADHD, you know, a little bit of a hard time sitting still and staying on task and staying focused. So I used to tell my clients and my coaches have told me do this every month write down a hundred ways that you could make that hundred K, right? Like, let's say your, your goal is a hundred K cash infusion. Then, um, but what I now do it differently is instead of doing it once a month, cause it's like the beginning of the month. And I'm like, I don't really feel like writing a hundred ways, right? So I'll write a couple every day. That's part of my daily journal of like, and it's like, Ooh, this could happen. That could happen. Wouldn't that be fun if that happened? And then it allows you to also recalibrate and feel and tune into of like, yeah, I could make a hundred K doing this, but it's not really in alignment anymore, is it? And it's so funny because then as you write out your goals every month as well, you could be writing your goals and go, oh, I don't really want that anymore. And sometimes it's actually, you get exactly the thing you want and you realize, I don't really want that anymore. And that could be a big money block for you, right? Where you finally got everything you wanted and now you don't want it anymore. Like you should want it. Like, how could you be so disrespectful to the wise wealth that your God has given you? But sometimes it takes getting everything you want to realize you don't, you don't want it. Right. And so that could, and so then there's no growth there because that could be the reason why. Right. So I've given you some things to think about today. And I, let me give you one more thing to think about. If you are looking to expand your revenue. I'll be honest with you. One of the first thing people do is cut their marketing expenses when they are experiencing a revenue contraction, which I find to be mind boggling because that's the time to be all in with showing up, right? That's the time you want to have all hands on deck to get your message out there, to convince people even more so from a, from a, loving space from an ethical space that uh of why during these times they it's going to change their lives to prioritize utilizing their finances with you when they have so much else going on in the world that's this is the time to be all in with marketing and so if you are a holistic wellness and beauty expert who just wants to let go of your marketing you want somebody who knows what they're doing when it comes to content creation, graphic creation, web development, photo and video design, photo and video that is going to like stop people in their scroll online and pay attention to you above everybody else. And also ads to that. We now are certified and specialized and have a whole team for Google ad spend and social ad spend. And also partnering with things like influencers and the media to get your word out there. Trust me when I say this, when you step forward with us looking for support in a marketing agency, we are all in. My whole team, all hands on deck, we got you. We got you. So that you can focus on being the person that you want to be to your clients, to your team, to your family. You don't have to think about marketing except for popping in and out oh, maybe a few minutes a day into our communication platform, say, yeah, yeah, thank you, right? As we deliver real-time insights and we pivot for you, we strategize for you, we make connections for you so you can let it all go. And our clients have experienced as much as doubling their revenue within month one of working with us just from the pure feeling of 
letting go of their marketing. And all of a sudden, everybody's noticing them like, you are everywhere. Who does your marketing? You're amazing. You're kicking butt. And they're so proud of you. And they're referring even more people to you because they see you everywhere. And so they equate that with success and talent. And we're here for you for that. And if you're not quite at a place where you have a team and you are already almost, you know, you're already at multi six figures and maybe even almost two seven figures or beyond, you know, that's who my marketing agency is for. I wouldn't recommend our level of investments for somebody who's just starting out or isn't at that multi six figure and beyond yet right now. That's we've really shifted who we serve with that. But if you're an emerging entrepreneur who would love to get to that place, I've mentored countless women women business leaders. And I still get messages of like, oh my gosh, my program just sold out. And it wasn't even that difficult. And they're scaling and they're getting asked to speak and they're becoming best-selling authors. I'm here for you. All right. Thanks for being here with me today. And again, this is the show's produced by Media the Creative Agency. If you'd love to be featured on the show or if you'd love to be a sponsor, please PM me. You know my name on any of the social platforms that you're on, that I'm on. I'd love to help you. Bye everyone. Until next time.